And I want your take on the significance of this event, because to my eye, the first half of the iPhone's life was more about design changes and network upgrades. The second half has been more display size and quality and camera quality. Are we entering perhaps a new era here? I think that's possible. Uh, I think that definitely, if you're, I would agree with your assessment. I think the last few years uh, have definitely been about the camera. I think there's still a lot of room though to go on the camera. Um, and I think we're sort of entering the beginning of this era of what they call computational photography, where the quality of the video and the photos you shoot is so involved with the software and the chips and the, the computing capabilities as opposed to just the lens and the sensor. Um, but I don't think we're going to see radical changes in the form factor like we did in the first half of the, the smartphone era. Yeah, Apple lately has been very much doubling down on the things that they can control, the custom chips, you know, the, the vertical integration services that are tied into the device. Here we are with networks now in 5G. They've got to rely on carriers again to help tell this story. Uh, I, I wonder if they do that differently this time than they have in the past. Yeah, I think it's, a, it's always a tough situation for Apple because Apple's whole shtick, if you will, is that they do things their way. And the cell network isn't theirs, and it's it can't be. There's you know there's it, the iPhone is a worldwide product. Carriers are available around the world, and anything they can brag about with 5G speed is something that phones from other phone makers can also take advantage of. Um, and I think the other factor that's involved here, and and I really do think it it can't be overstated. Most people I know, their biggest problems, if you say, what would you like in a new phone? Their problem isn't LTE speed. I don't even know that that would make the list for a lot of people. So even if 5G is faster than LTE, which given the testing of the current networks around the country is actually a big if um, for people in the real world, not hypothetical speeds, which are clearly faster. Is that really addressing the top problem yeah. people have? I John, what is the top problem people have? And given the fact that speed may not be an incentive for people to upgrade, uh, what are you expecting in terms of pricing uh, for those four phones that we're anticipating? Uh, I think the, I think that one of the biggest problems people have is battery life. I, I think it always has been and will be for the foreseeable future. Uh, I think people use their phones continuously. We joke about it all the time. It's It's something you see on TV now. I mean, just TV shows characters are on their phones all the time. I mean, it's just part of modern life. We can complain about it and think about the old days when we didn't have our phones out and it wasn't a big deal about arguing, hey, put your phones away for dinner and stuff like that. But we have them out all the time. It's the, just the way it is. People want their phones to last longer. I think somebody who said, if you said this phone gets faster cellular networking and this other phone gets twice the battery life, everybody would jump on the one with the battery life. And then I think the other factor is photographic quality. Everybody wants their pictures and videos to look better. Those are, to me, the two simple, obvious things. Um, what was your other question? Well, well I, pricing. I think that yeah. the pricing is going to be very much the same as it was last year. I think with, you know, uh, I, and I think that, you know, we have enough leaks to know that there will be iPhone 12s without the pro name at about the same price point as last year's in the iPhone 12 pros uh, in two sizes at the higher price points. Yeah. Sorry, remember the days. Remember the days when we used to, you know, eagerly await one more thing, and we were actually surprised what was coming here. These days, we we kind of know. John Gruber, uh, great to have you. Hope to see you again soon. Oh, it's great to be here. Thank you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.